Well, happy birthday to me. My husband uh, bought me some uh, inverts. So let's take a look and see what I got. Before I get into showing you what exactly I got, uh, this is where I got them. Kelly Swift. This is where I get uh, the majority of my collection. And as always, he does an excellent packing job. But that's to be expected because he's been in the hobby for quite a while now. So, very reliable. That's why I uh, deal with him a lot. All right, now let's take a look. Well, as you can see, the first thing I got are some millipedes. These particular ones, let's see if I can even pronounce the scientific name. Uh, let's see, Orthoporus ornatus, the reddish brown desert millipede. These guys get to be about, was it six inches? Uh, yeah, about six inches. So, let's see, let's take a look. How many do we have in here? find the most fascinating to watch. Well, it looks like we have three for sure. You know what? I think he did. I think he threw in uh, uh, some uh, of the other kind too. Because that looks like the uh, one I just told you the name of. And then these look like the uh, other kind. Let me show you what I'm talking about as soon as I can get this one to uh, dismount. <laughs> there we go. Look at all those little legs. The other ones. I bet the uh, lighter colored ones are the. Ortho, let's see, Orthoporus ornatus, the giant yellow desert millipede. So apparently I have a reddish brown and the giant yellows. Aren't those awesome? Look at that. And these seem to be very friendly. Uh, they uh, are not curling up in a little ball like a lot of them do when they feel stressed out so they must be uh wonder if they've been handled quite a bit i don't know uh let's see there's that one and there's you have to be careful how you pick them up because you don't want to tear off any legs so it looks like i have two of the yellow ones and two of the red ones like the largest one right there check it out now millipedes do not bite but they do secrete this liquid uh, from their skin if they feel stress as a defense mechanism uh, and that that is a uh, toxic you wouldn't want to uh, put it in your eyes or your mouth and you want to wash your hands for sure after you get it on you but look at that two red ones and two yellow ones this makes me very happy and I asked for two and he gave me an extras so I'm a pretty loyal customer so perhaps that's why or he just had extras he needed to get rid of I don't know why but I'm gonna thank him for the uh, two extras so we're going to put these aside for right now, and then let's take a look at what else I got. Okay, this one I'm not going to open up until I'm ready to uh, actually house it. But this is the Dune Scorpion, a very common scorpion that you can find. Uh, this one, let's see if I could even try to find the pronounce the scientific name. It's Moringus Messianus Messiansis. Anyway, Dune Scorpion. <laughs> oh, these guys are uh, definitely have some uh, potent stings, so you do not want to handle these for sure. 
Uh, this is not a deadly scorpion. I will not have one of those in my collection while I have a uh, young child in the house. But um, this one here is uh, just fine. Uh, some good eaters of, and uh, pretty defensive. But uh, so there's that one. And uh, this one will be housed in some sand. Unlike my uh, Asian forest scorpions, and those are, you know, housed in uh, substrate, eco earth. So let's take a look at what else I got. Now I already have one of these. Uh, my specimen is a juven juvenile. It is uh, two and a half inches. Uh, now this one here, I think, is a half an inch. So let's take a look. This was the freebie, by the way, since I had purchased over a hundred dollars of uh, animals. So, of course, these guys are old world and very fast. And because of that, I'm going to be very cautious here. But there it is. This is the Kilobrachys discolus, the Asian smoky gray. And uh, like I said, I already have one. But there's the, the baby. So these guys, of course, run very quickly. So sorry, I'm a little off camera there. But there it is. You find the lid really quick before it decides to run away, <laughs> like it would have. There we go. It's not coming out too great, but you'll see it. <laughs> Has that typical Kilobrachys uh, elongated uh, body abdomen there. All right, let's move on to uh, another one. Now, I've never had this uh, particular uh, tarantula spe uh, species before. Uh, this is the Let's see, how do I say it? Uh, Thrigmopoeus insignis, the Indian acid brown. This is a uh, terrestrial. Uh, this one uh, likes to burrow. Uh, so you would keep it uh, very much like you would keep uh, a uh, Kilobrachys uh, species. Uh, they do web like crazy. So uh, let's take a look. This particular specimen is the same size as the uh, Kilobrachys uh, that I got a half an inch. So we'll see how this goes. So we're going to have another huge Weber here. So being an old world, it's probably extremely quick too. Oh yeah. Here's that cutie. And go ahead and put it in here. Or try to anyway. There we go. Little bitty thing. So yeah, a lot of substrate. So it'll probably be very much like the Kilobrachys and also very much like the Selena Cosmia that I have. I had the Obscura, so this one's probably very much like that as well. So deep substrate, a little bit on the damp side, and they'll be happy. All right, one left to go in the Kelly Swift's box. Now I have had one of these before, although it was very brief. This is uh, probably, in my opinion, the most beautiful tarantula in the world that I have seen and that has been discovered, in my opinion. Uh, I uh, already, like I said, I had one and it was about uh, mm, an inch or less. I don't remember how big it was, but it died as a little baby. So I was not a happy camper, especially, you know, these guys are not cheap. Um, <clears throat> This is the Poclotheria Metallica, the Goody Sapphire Ornamental. So hopefully I can keep this one alive. 
They're not cheap even as slings, although the price has definitely gone down. But, uh, let's take a look. And, of course, being a uh, pokey, these guys are extremely fast. And you can just barely, well, I don't know if you can, but I can just barely see blue coming in. Just barely. But there it is, three-fourths of an inch. Although, to me, it almost looks a little bit bigger than that. That one already looks to be about an inch, inch and a half to me. But, hey, I'm not complaining. Yeah, the one I had was smaller than this for sure. But look at that. Already has that abdominal pattern that Pocletherias have. It's not coming out too well on camera. Let's see. A little light. Of course, they don't like the light. From what I've heard for a pokey, these guys are not as crazy. But you know how pokies can be. They're full of surprises. So let's see. All right, this is about as simple of a setup as you can have. Uh, this is for the Kilobrachys discolus, um, being that it is only that big. I feel that uh, this substrate is enough uh, for this size. Um, and I'm not going to put any kind of hides in there because you know how they are. Uh, they like to dig their own burrows and web up all the whole entire place. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, put uh, this one in its new home. So I have the substrate a little bit on the damp side because they like it that way and the water dish and that's all it really needs. This one will do the rest. So I get my trusty paintbrush and see if I can coax it out without any uh, fuss but you know with the Kilo Brackies you you're probably going to get a fuss. So. Look at all the webbing it had already done. <laughs> and there you have it. Alright. Let's move on to a different one. Okay. Let me go ahead and open up this container. like he's testing the ground. Yep, that's sand. You like sand. There you go. That was easy. What a beauty. <laughs> Cute. Alright, just like with the Kilo Brachys Discolus, I'm going to uh, put this one in uh, semi-moist substrate and uh, for its size I have it plenty of substrate to burrow in. It won't need any kind of decoration because it's just going to burrow and web all on the top and underneath the burrow and all that stuff. So uh, I'm not going to put a water dish in this one because it just would crowd the dish too much and I mean the container too much and the tea too much and uh, so I'll just you know make sure it has plenty to drink by spraying in there. But uh, Here's a little bitty thing here. Let's go ahead and try to coax it out with this paintbrush and hope that it's easy just like the others have been. Let's see. And there you go. Same with the Pocletheria Metallica with the water dish. I'm just going to spray it instead of put the water dish in there because it just wouldn't it'd be in the way and uh, so it just wouldn't fit in there very well. And I got uh, uh, pokies don't need a lot of substrate, but as babies they kind of like to hang out at the bottom of trees 
uh, so, uh, just like your sawmill poets do. So I got enough substrate in there to for it to make a height in addition to uh, being able to climb. So uh, since it is considered an arboreal, so let's go ahead and uh, house this one now. Okay, let's go ahead and do this one. There it is. It's in there. <laughs> that was a little challenging, but could have been worse. All right, and I'll show you guys what the, the what they all look like after they've made their homes and stuff, and let them settle down. All right, with the millipedes, I got this <laughs> kind of unsightly, but they like it that way. A uh, container here, thick container full of uh, Eco Earth cocoa fiber substrate. And I mixed it in with uh, dead leaf litter and just threw some sticks in there, as you can see. Uh, as far as water goes, if I were to go on a vacation or something, I might put a water dish in it with pebbles in it. Otherwise, I'll just keep the substrate damp. Uh, and that will suffice because they like damp substrate. So let's go ahead and work on putting these guys in here. Let's see. There's one. Here's two, here's three, and I can get it, and there's four. All right, y'all enjoy that. All right, guys, that's all of this video. Coming up next, I have another tea that I'm going to rehouse that I got as a birthday gift from someone else. Stay tuned for that.